Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hey, darling, where are you going? Not finishing breakfast? I just want to get my pocketbook. Look, we're eating at home. There'll be no check to pay. It'd be for you to pay anyway. <laughs> oh, here it is. Why right where I left it last night. Odd Bodkins. What's odd? Bodkins. Never heard of him. Who is he? Darned if I know. Just an expression of amazement that you put something where you could find it. Oh, now. What are you peering into that mirror for? Does one side of my face look bigger to you than the other? Swollen? No. No, it doesn't look swollen. Why? Got a sort of a dull toothache in the rear upper corner of my jaw. Since when? Since I woke up. I must have slept on my face, I guess. What do you usually sleep on? A pillow, of course. Oh, of course. Does it... Hurt much, darling? No, not much. I, I don't think it's anything. Maybe I bit too hard on something at dinner last night. Well, if it doesn't go away or if it gets worse, you ought to go see your dentist. You ought to see him anyway, I think. You sound like an advertisement. Feels a little better already. Hot coffee helps. Then put that little mirror away in your bag and have another cup. I'll pour. But, darling, uh, call him and... Say, David, did you put a dollar in my pocketbook last night? No. Well, that's queer, because there's a dollar in it now. A small fortune. Put it in the savings account. I mean, it's a dollar I shouldn't have. No reason why you shouldn't have one, providing you don't spend it all at once. How's that for a generous husband? Very generous. <laughs> but, you know, I made up my mind to spend every cent I had, and I did. And now I find I have a dollar left. Did I hear you say you made up your mind to spend every cent you had? Mm, yesterday afternoon. I don't feel so generous anymore. How much money did you spend? All but a dollar? All of it, including this one. That's the strange part. David... Look, darling, I, I know I'm not very bright so early in the morning, but uh, I don't think I've lost my mind completely. Now, start all over again and tell me quietly exactly what happened. Remember, I'm your husband, not a mind reader. Well, yesterday afternoon you went back to the office after the auction sale... And I went shopping. Buying and selling a $2,500 sofa at the auction sale wasn't enough, huh? It was too much. I wanted to get the sofa out of my system. <laughs> so I went shopping at the 5 and 10 cent store. Get some little things around the house. Well, what we need is some big things around the house, like chairs and tables. <laughs> well, as I was saying, I went into the 5 and 10 cent store to get some little things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mop and a pail and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I opened my pocketbook, and what do you think? Out jumped a frog. Frogs are in throats, not pocketbooks. <laughs> well, what did you find? Five dollars. No. Yes. So there I was with five dollars in the entire five and ten cent store at my disposal. What a wild, mad passion must have seized you. <laughs> you have no idea how easy it is to spend five dollars in a ten cent store. Practically everything costs a dollar. Inflation, not that's at what all. it is. It's worth a dollar. It's worth... Do you want to hear what I'm saying or don't you? Well, go on. Go well, on. then be quiet, please. Anyway, I bought a pail for a dollar and a mop and a ringer for a dollar and, let's see, six dishcloths for a dollar mm -hmm. and uh, an iron stand for a dollar and... Uh, and, uh... Oh, yes, an everyday fountain pen. What's that add, add up to? Exactly five dollars. That's what I figured. So I should have come home without a cent. Stony broke. And now I find I have a dollar right here in my change purse. Where do you suppose I got it? I don't know, but... This sort of thing has possibilities. I'll uh, give you a hundred dollars. See what you can do with that. <laughs> David, now be serious. I'm serious. I think that dollar isn't yours. Not mine? Then whose? The five and ten cent stores. The stores? They're not selling dollars there. Exactly. You mean maybe I didn't pay for one of the things I bought, is that it? Oh, so at last you admit it. Admit what? Walking out with an unpaid for purchase. I don't see how I... Now, let me see. I, I remember paying for the pail and the mop. 
And they put the dish flowers in a bag with the iron stand. And, and, and what about the and fountain the pen? fountain pen. Oh, David, I must have put it right in my pocket. And nobody saw you? I guess nobody did because nobody asked me to pay for it. Mm. You filched that fountain pen. But I didn't mean to. The fact remains you filched it, a fine thing. I married two months. Suddenly, without any warning, one fine day, I wake up to learn that my wife is a kleptomaniac. That's not the other thing, is it? It's a nice upper-class word for shoplifting. It's not when you don't do it on purpose. Besides, it, it, it's the first time. Tell it to the judge. You think I ought to go back there today and return the dollar? That's an admission of guilt. Mama says admitting something makes it all right. And all right with your conscience, maybe, but not with the ten-cent store. They'll be mighty suspicious that you don't owe them a little more. Oh, you make it so complicated. <laughs> the simple thing for you to do is never cross that dime store's doors again. Are you serious? Absolutely. You want me to be, don't you? Never go in there again. It's such a wonderful store. They have all sorts of things. For a dollar. I love that ten cent store. I know what I'll do. I'll send them back their dollar in postage stamps. How about that? <laughs> they wouldn't appreciate it. It would mess up their bookkeeping system. I feel awful about keeping it. You should. Sinners should suffer for their sin. But I'll have to keep it. There's nothing else I can do. And I've suffered enough, I'm going to put it out of my mind. Put it out of your mind? This minute. Oh, such a fuss about a dollar. Well, I think you must have a latent leaning towards petty crime, or this would prey on your conscience. I've decided not to let it. I am profoundly shocked. Can't help it. The ten-cent store can get along without my dollar. <laughs> Oh. What's the matter? The words stick in your throat? No, it's my cheek. And no, no, I mean my tooth. A tooth for a tooth. I have a pain right through the side of my face. I can hardly talk. David, you don't think it's a twinge of conscience, do you? The way you look, I'm pretty sure it's a twinge of tooth. <laughs> Where does it hurt? Here, show me. Right over uh, my finger. Uh -huh. I mean, how can I see you if you got... <laughs> how can I see you if you got your finger in your mouth? Right up there. In the right-hand corner. Hmm. Hmm? You haven't got a tooth in the upper right-hand corner. I must have. It hurts. Could it be God paying me back because of the dollar? God's too busy. He's got too many other things to worry about. Does it hurt much, darling? Not much. I just can't eat or talk. Come on. We'll go see the dentist. I should say not. Maybe it'll go away just the way it came. I'm not taking any chances. We're going to see that dentist right away. David, you're always rushing into things. I'm taking you to that dentist personally before I go to the office. You have a way of putting things off that you don't like to do. It uh, came over suddenly at breakfast, Doctor. One minute she was talking, and the next her mouth was just open. I see. Well, it doesn't sound very serious. I don't think it is, but I thought she'd better come over right away. Yes, I'm very wise. Besides, I welcome this opportunity of meeting Claudia's husband. What have you been telling Dr. Martin, David? Nothing, dear. Just telling him how you got your toothache this morning. I don't know how I got it. That's the point. Now, get into the chair, Claudia, and let's have a look. I'll uh, go into the waiting room, Doctor. David, don't go. Oh, it's perfectly all right for you to stay in here, Mr. Norton. Well, if you don't mind. Now, Claudia, put your head back. Now, how's this? Comfortable? Wonderful, I could go right to sleep. Go right ahead, darling. Dr. Martin will appreciate it. Tell me where it hurts. In the upper right-hand corner. Yes? Up where my tongue is. Mm-hmm. See anything? No, open wide. You find our earth, Dr. Martin? Open wide. Uh-huh. I see the trouble. You mean I really have something wrong? David, you see it wasn't a twinge of conscience. I anymore. never said it was. Your conscience did. Young lady... You're cutting a wisdom tooth. I am, David. You hear what Dr. Martin said? I can hardly believe it. She's a little retarded. Oh, it varies. Some people cut their wisdom teeth young, and some cut them late. Yeah, it looks impacted. I'll have to take x-rays of it and see what's what. But I may have to pull it. Pull it? My one and only was wisdom tooth? Will you uh, take the x-rays now, Doctor? I'd like to. I'll come back some other day. You stay here. And you do what Dr. Martin says. Uh, doctor, uh, could I call my office, please? Yes, go right ahead. The phone's in the other room. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. You won't have to pull it, will you? I'm, I'm just getting it. Well, we'll see. Open wide. Have you had any other trouble with your teeth? Uh, none at all since I'm married. It seems to agree with me. I'd say it does. You're looking very well. 
I'd say you've even gained a little weight. Have I? Yes. You look very pleased about it all. Are you going to have a baby, Claudia? Of course we're going to have a baby. What's a marriage without a baby? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Congratulations, my dear. What for? It's only natural and normal. Well, congratulations, nevertheless. You know, too many young people wait too long for their first baby. We're very lucky. Our new apartment has an extra room, so we don't have to wait. Besides, I think I'd like to manage it so I'll be a grandmother while I'm still young. Well, you're very ambitious. Anyway, it'll be more fun that way. By the time I'm 60, I expect first I can... First things first, young woman. And I want you to be coming in here to see me regularly. You know, having a baby is a lot of wear and tear on your teeth. That's the last place you'd expect. I'll give you a prescription of calcium. Calcium? What for? For the baby's teeth. I see. Oh, hello, Dave. Is the office all right? Oh, yes, 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 fine. And watch your diet. Mm -hmm. After all, you don't want to put on too much weight. Oh, of course not, no. Claudia, Claudia put on weight? Well, it's unavoidable, Mr. Norton. But if she's careful, the mother's weight goes back to normal once the baby is born. Baby? It's fascinating, isn't it, David? I'll get the x-ray plates prepared, and we'll get some pictures of this so-called wisdom. Now, 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 now darling, darling, uh, quickly, quickly explain everything to me. Explain you what, David? What's did, the matter? You're shaking did, did, all over. Did I understand uh, Dr. Martin to say that we're going to have a baby? Of course we're going to. You know we're going to have a baby. I told him we were going to. You, Is anything you wrong told here? It. Now, now, look, darling, darling... Uh, there is one thing, only one thing I, I want to know. All right, I'd be glad to tell you. What is it, David? Why? Why on earth didn't I know before? Why did you know what before? About the baby, you cluck. David, I don't know what all this fuss is about. You know we're going to have one. But when? After all, Claudia. I mean, I think you should have come to me about this. After all, the, the one thing I... I, I am the father. Well, how should I know when I'm not a fortune teller, darling? Oh. Look, Claudia. Sit down there a minute. Take it easy. What is the matter with you, David? You I've know never what you've seen done. you in such a state. Do you have the slightest idea what you've done? For the moment, we'll forget what you've just put me through. I'll live, I think. But you... You've misled Dr. Martin into believing you were in the process of having a baby. I did no such thing. He brought up the subject of babies himself. I didn't say one thing. He just jumped to conclusions. And so did you. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Many's the housewife who eats sketchy leftovers for lunch because it's too much trouble to prepare anything just for herself. If you fall into that habit, here's a tip that'll make the tidbit taste better. When you take leftovers from the refrigerator, reach for an ice-cold Coke at the same time. For Coca-Cola makes even a skimpy lunch a refreshing repast. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>